I'm very fortunate because I, I did grow up not only with parents who, who really loved and support me in so many ways, but they were uh, financially successful and uh, provided me every opportunity I could have ever asked for, which is such a gift I'm beyond grateful for. Um, but I also have that understanding that, as you just said, um, not very many people get that experience. Um, and especially with me being an only child like that, I had all the all the attention and really whatever I desired to experience or go for in my life, I had the full support uh, financially, emotionally, um, you know, the whole the whole thing. Uh, and so I was really, really fortunate. My parents would travel all over the country um, to to help and support whatever it was that I was I was doing. Um, and so, you know, I didn't it took me a while to recognize that very few actually had that because I happened to be in a circle where that's where that was kind of the norm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and through that process that really opened up my eyes as I kind of got older. Um, but I'd say kind of the first initiation of, of my start was, uh, when I was 14, actually I got struck by lightning and, uh, from that, was that on the golf course, that was on the golf course. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I almost, I did, I almost died. I was with my dad and, uh, had a, kind of a, an epiphany, if you will, um, where I really, I only remember a handful of memories prior to being 14 years old. And so it was almost like a, a, a reset. And so the little bit that I have, I, I feel like maybe I don't align with that individual or um, maybe there are characteristics that don't align with me uh, as a soul, or at least how I feel I am. And so there's this um, disconnect in many ways. And so what that put me onto this path um, when I was in high school was through golf. And so I, th I feel that what I did was I ended up taking the identity as a golfer and placing that as my own. So something that was outside of myself, the results I was getting, um, I, I was really fortunate. I happened to be one of the top junior golfers in the country. I was traveling the world. A lot of the guys I played golf with are now on the PGA Tour. Um, and they're just amazing, amazing, awesome guys. So um, I'm really proud of what they're doing. Um, but uh, it was definitely an identity, something that I desired to be. And uh, and so for it was good in a way that I wasn't, it wasn't that I just wanted to be famous or, or anything like that. It was like something, I just really enjoy the game of golf. I loved, I loved it. And uh, through that process, I didn't realize how much I was making it my identity, my ups and downs relative to how well I played. And my value in life was how, how, you know, how well I played and whether I got a college scholarship, whether I got a full scholarship, um, you know, all of these were playing aspects to who I am and were determining uh, my happiness or sadness or just value as a human being. Um, even and my wasn't grades. There, wasn't there some tying of wealth to that identity and like flying private and yeah. having bottles of champagne in clubs and stuff <laughs> you mentioned before? Yeah. And so... Uh, I was, that got elevated at a different point. Um, and so what happened was in college, um, I did achieve my full golf scholarship and playing D1 golf. And, I, and then I got injured. Um, I had a herniated explosion in my neck, my back, three cracked ribs, vertigo, and psoas all at the same time. And I found out that I would never play golf again. That's what I was told. And so if you can imagine when your identity is tied to something like that, uh, the whole world, it felt like uh, just my legs got swiped around underneath me and everything came crashing. Um, and I felt like I lost everything. I was in my first point of depression ever I've ever experienced. And um, I almost had to restart again in a way. And it was like, I don't know who I am, what I am, what I'm doing with my life. If I don't know that I'm a golfer, then what do I do? And this was when I was 21. So I was just getting ready to graduate here soon. Didn't know what I wanted to do anymore. I mean, because my whole life path just got shifted away from me. And so I started seeing, you know, at that point, a lot about um, what it means to be a man and what the lifestyle, a successful guy in their 20s, it was to be an entrepreneur. It was to, you know, have a new girl on your arm every single week. It was to, uh, you know, just throw money around and be at the clubs and have bottle service and fly private and have multiple businesses and, you know, everything that it meant to like, you know, wear really nice clothes and have a nice car and just all, all the things like that is what it meant to be a successful guy. And so I started to take on that identity and didn't realize the detriment that I was creating in my life. The hollow aspect I kept attempting to fulfill 
uh, was actually a void the whole time because mm -hmm. I had no connection to myself or any awareness of who I am or, or why I was doing any of this. The really only realization is I wanted it to do so I could be uh, famous and successful and have status. And that was the only thing that was important to me. And, uh, and then that's kind of, uh, by the time I was 25, I was again, back to that unhappy place. Um, so not very much longer, only a couple of years. And, you know, I had those, uh, perceived highs, if you will, where everything felt and looked like it was amazing because that's what it looked like to everyone else. And so I was vicariously living my life through everyone else's eyes and really missed the true value of what it meant to be me and live my own life, not from an egoic standpoint, but just from a true authentic aspect of, of that, hey, I'm a part of this world too, and I'm just as valuable as everyone else. And so I kind of had a realization when I was 25 and a uh, quarter life crisis, if you will, and uh, uh, just had that full reset again. And uh, that's when I happened to meet uh, my amazing love, Amber, here. And she saw in me what I had yet to see in my own self. And that was uh, such a gift that I can never, never fully repay. Um, and it was uh, a way for me to pull back and reset again and recognize that uh, it, all, it all is from that place of authenticity and that self-love is a beautiful uh, way to understand who you are, not from that, you know, champagnes and, and bubble mm -hmm. bath kind of self-love, but from the true essence of understanding that, uh, that it's not something outside of ourselves that creates the value. It's something that we choose to experience within ourselves that we can express into the external world around us. And that is beyond value. 